Hi, I'm Sandy Genovese, and today we're gonna to create a really fun, special little mini scrapbook. Here is the scrapbook that we're gonna create, and when you look at it, you can see the binding. The weaving technique is a little bit like a piano style binding, if you're at all familiar with that, but I opted to alter it a little bit just to make it a little easier and to not have multiple sticks coming out. This is just one really fat straw. And you'll see when we get to the middle, I've got it decorated in really bright colors because I'm gonna be adding in Addison's photos. Addison is my niece's oldest little girl and she is 10. She has decided she wanted this very, she had really long, pretty strawberry blonde hair and she still has very pretty strawberry blonde hair and she wanted it in this color or this haircut to match Oh, I, I can't even remember. Uh, I think it's a Swedish pop musician, rock star. And so they sent me down the photos of her haircut and it's very, very short on one side and long on the other side. And so I have a lot of these cool photos. I'm not gonna, I have more than what I have here, but this scrapbook is gonna be dedicated to this really special fun event. So I haven't put the photos in yet because I'm gonna do it with Addison and I'm gonna have her hand, hand write and print in her own writing some of the information that's gonna go inside. But in order to start, we need to see how to construct this style of scrapbook. And of course you can put it with whatever photos and whatever colors make sense for you. What I did, I had um, 12 or 13 pages because I picked all these bright colors. If I look at it, I had red and then orange, gold, yellow, green, blue, purple, pink, and all folded so that by the time you do the fronts and the backs, it creates a 30 page scrapbook. I'm not gonna do all those pages. I think that it's maybe a little bit more manageable. You might want a 12 page. If you want a 12 page book, then all you need is, in my example, the red, the orange, and the yellow. And that's because we're gonna fold and then you're gonna use the fronts and the backs. So I started with paper. My paper was five inches wide and 12 inches long. And the thing that I did first was I folded it in half. Once it was folded in half, then I went back and you can add whatever decorative edge that you want, or you can just leave it straight. This was based on um, a die cut. So once you've got that folded edge, then come back from that middle fold and you wanna go 3 8 out and you want to put a score line. So. From this middle fold, I've come out three eighths and I'm going to score. And I'm gonna do this with all the pages. So, and from the middle score, the fold line, I'm gonna come out three eighths on the other side and do the same thing, do a score line. So I've got the score lines. How far out you come will be based on what implement you decide to thread through for your binding but if you use something the same as what I use, that's what I needed to do. Then you're gonna fold it and you come in a quarter inch and then start by creating these slits that go right to the score line. So I've gonna, I'm gonna cut a slit every half inch. I come in a quarter inch and then a half inch, a half inch, a half inch. You keep going in half inch increments until what's left at the other end is another quarter inch. So you end up with a quarter inch on both sides and then nine of these tabs in the center. So at this point, I'm gonna open it back up. Now I'm actually going to bind this with a fatter straw, but right now, before I have all my fold lines on those scores, I'm going to leave this first one sticking up and then the next one is going to go down and it's easiest to just take, I'm gonna do all the pages together and I'm going to put this straw through. This next one goes down, this one stays up. So it's like weaving. This one punches down, this one goes up, just alternates like this with every other one going down and you'll end up, because of the number of cuts that you have, with this. However, this is going to be not tight enough for the binding. At this point, if you look at this, 
you can see you're starting to get how this is going to go together. So now I'm going to fold on my score lines like so. I'm just going to go back and it's why it's helpful to already have those score lines there. And you can see how now that I fold on all of my scores, now this is too loose. This is really just going to fall out. So that's why you need a fatter implement. And I've tried, I've used pencils. What I thought was the best was this really fat straw. And I'm going to reinforce all of my folds so you can see what you have here. Now I need something for the dimensions of the slits that we made. And what I did is at Target, they have these fat straws. And they, you can see there's different lengths. And uh, it's because it's um, a heavy cardboard, you can use your scissors or your X-Acto knife and you can cut it down. This happened to be just the right length. That's how come I, the paper is the, the, the length and the width that it is. But it's going to thread through there. If you have difficulty finding this, because I got these a while ago at Target, I discovered that all the party stores in my area carry these party blowers. And it's really easy to take your scissors and remove this mylar and this portion comes right off and it leaves you with this. And look at that. This is the same. It's a very sim similar dimension. So it would give you something also cardboard, but sturdy and thick, really really hard. So once you have this, you need to make sure that this is going to be the right thickness for your opening. And if it's too, if this is too fat, you can go back and make your slits just a tiny bit deeper. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to thread these through. See if I can do this so that you can see just like I did with the straw, but now with one that's the right thickness. So if I start at this end, you can see how I'm going to just weave it back through going under and over the paper layers. So as you get towards the end, You can see how it, that nice snug fit. See, now it sort of pays off because it's such a good fit. It, it was really a nice sturdy binding for this. And like I said, this is going to generate 12 pages. So you're going to have the front and the back of each of these. And then you can go back and reinforce the score lines that you created, all of these fold lines, so that they'll fold. And you get all those pages. It's 12 if you count the covers. So at any rate, at this point, depending on how many pages, like I said, if you want to do more pages, just do more all at the same time before you thread the, your straw through or, you know, your party blower or whatever it is that you're, I even discovered that it works if you want to use these really fat pencils. If you were doing a school album, wouldn't it be cool to have this do fatter, fatter, wider pages and use this as your binding. At this point, it's time to just add the decoration, which is the fun and the easy part. Because I was doing this for Addison, and she's really into the bright colors, which I have to say I like too. It's something I never grew out of for some reason. So I'm going to go ahead and add a black and white stripe. When I use bright, bright, bright colors, it's helpful, I think, to offset it with something black and white. So. I'm going to start by lining up this edge and lay this down and then I'll trim off the excess. And I'm going to add other bright colors. I thought I would show you. Sometimes you can see that I use pattern papers, you know, that I like, and other times I add in things that are handmade, either because I can't find the colors I want, or sometimes it's just a lot less expensive. So if you look at this, you can see that this layer here, this yellow, is just where I've taken a pencil eraser and I've used this to create the polka dots on a strip of plain yellow paper. 
because I couldn't find anything with that really kind of reddish yellow that I wanted. This paper here, I couldn't find either, so I made it. And what I did was I took a strip of blue and I took a strip of purple. They need to be the same width. And I laid this down on my paper trimmer where all of the measurements are marked. And you know what? I did this with pencil. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it. I'm gonna mark this with white just so you can see. If I had my ruler down, it would be easier for you to see what I'm gonna do. If you start at one end of the ruler, every half inch, I'm gonna make a mark. So if I mark half inch, half inch, half inch, using the ruler as a guide, I'm gonna mark half inch increments along this purple strip. I actually did this already when I did it with pencil, so I realize you probably can't see it. Then down here, I wanna start at quarter of an inch, the halfway point, and mark my first one quarter of an inch in and then go in half inch increments. So it's gonna make it easy for me to go back and cut these triangle shapes without having to do much in the way of measuring. I'm only measuring in the very beginning these half inch increments. So once you have those marked, you can see now it's a little bit easier. Now I'm gonna go back and take my scissors and I'm gonna cut. So now I'm gonna use the white marks as a guide. Now, if I had left it in pencil, I would add adhesive to the back of this and then cut all these out and then I could erase the pencil. But since they're in white, I don't want those white marks to show. It's just easier when you have adhesive already on all these tiny little pieces. But I'm gonna use this to create my diamond. So I'm going from tip to tip and there I get my first diamond. Here's gonna be the next diamond. So I'm just going from my white marks, but it is an easy way to get the shapes that I'm gonna need, these triangles, I said diamonds, I meant triangles, in order to create that triangle design. And I won't stop to do the whole thing, but once you have that, if you take a sticky note and with the side that has the white marks that you don't want to show, you place that against the sticky portion and you can do a whole bunch at once. Oh, I need the, the side with white to be facing up because this is the side that's going to have adhesive. So place a bunch of these on the sticky part. And while they're stuck down, add your adhesive. And then take the blue and go back. And you know, blue on blue doesn't show too well. Let me put a different color here. Let's try this. And place this down. And then I'll take the next one. And by the time I do a few of these, you'll see how it starts to create that really pretty pattern. If you have a lot to do, of course, this wouldn't make sense. It would take too long. But if it's just strips now and then, it's a really inexpensive and effective way to get exactly the colors you want and exactly the pattern that you want and even the exact thickness that you want. So that's just how many I did to start with, but you get the idea of how easy it is to create this neat pattern paper. So I can go ahead and attach this, this piece, attach this piece. If I had a yellow strip, I could do the, the polka dot pattern. You can see how easy it is to create these details. And then I took a butterfly. My family has a phrase 
that uh, in the morning when you get up, before you get into the, to the tub or the shower and you're all a mess, we always laughingly say, from this cocoon will emerge a beautiful butterfly. So I have the butterfly on the cover for the beautiful new haircut. But you can see all of these decorative pa papers are just going to go on the inside. And now it's ready to add the photos and the journaling. You know, sometimes a big moment like a super short haircut, well, it deserves a really special mini book in order to show it off.